As a youngster spending days off in Gooley Bay, I had always imagined what it would be like to set off with my dad in a canoe out past the furthest point on the horizon. I never had a final destination in mind. I dreamt of the joy in discovering new places and feeling exposed to the raw nature of the most expansive lake on the planet. Our big bay was homey, but what did the shores of the big water hold? Who called these places home and what were their experiences? In the past decade, I have paddled, hiked, and surfed many areas between Sault Ste. Marie and Terrace Bay. But I needed to experience the places in between. One continuous journey connecting all the places I love. I sought to understand the common threads of this vast fabric of fresh water. I set out from Shingwak Kinemagagamig on the St. Mary's River, the only natural outflow of Lake Superior. With my dad and supplies to last us the 300 plus kilometer journey north to Mishpacotton. Instead of sponsorship, we raised funds to support the Lake Superior Watershed Conservancy. I recorded intimate conversations with folks I met along the way, trying to understand what this part of the lake means to people. I wanted to reflect on our conversations and share what this place means to the people who call it home. My mom was from Thunder Bay, so between Sault Ste. Marie, Wawa, and Thunder Bay, I mean, I've seen most of the lake. Although I've never kayaked it like yourself, so <laughs> you're going to see it up close and personal. When you when you tell a story about a place, it's it's really important to tell the story of the, the people of the place. A lot of the voices and the people along the coast, and um, when you're not trying to make nature an adversary in your story. They've been people have been coming out of here for thousands and thousands of years, so it's pretty interesting. And you know how cold it can be. So when I trailed my hands in the water today, that gave me this huge feeling of calm because I knew if I went swimming <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> it would not be uh, life threatening. <laughs> and they see the lake and I've seen people literally jump for joy <laughs> just watching it. They just like almost prance all the way down to the shore and then um, get right into the water. Incredible like aqua and teal colors and it almost looked like it was from like the Caribbean and I just didn't expect to see something like that this far north. I spent uh, my whole life uh, on this lake anyways and it's all memorable. Yeah. <laughs> what surprised me about the lake is that you can go to almost any any of your favorite spots and what you expect to see may not be the same two times in a row. You come out here like the northern light show I seen out here was the I haven't come out here to see one since because it was that spectacular. So we came out here three times, maybe four times in a row with my girls and the northern lights never happened. So the next time they're like, we're not coming with you. You always say we're gonna see them and we never do. So I came out alone and the, the sun was barely even set and you could already see them with your naked eye. So I just, I don't know, I kind of did one of those thank yous to the, to the sky. <laughs> came right face to face, like from you to me with a giant bull moose. It was huge, its rack was like, the length of my hands, my arms spread out, and we just looked at each other for so long. Neither of us knew what to do, and, and it decided I wasn't a threat and just kept eating, but I was like, this is the largest animal I've ever seen, and, I, and I'm right next to it. It was, that was very cool, for sure. Wolves tons in the winter when I come out here. I can't believe the, 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 the prints in the, in the snow overnight. Like, I don't see them during the summer, but it, it, everything, comes to light in the winter when there's a fresh snowfall so that's really neat so there's much more happening out here than I'm that I'm aware of yeah I just think that Lake Superior is such a mystery to most people 
and even if they live here, they've never had this kind of intimate and also friendly experience with the lake. Getting up in the morning and put a pot of coffee on and for me to sit in my nice leather chair there and look out onto that lake and just see that sun come up across the lake over the hill. How could you not feel the best what's out there? Changing weather is, is amazing. Look at all, like today, the changing weather that we had. I mean, I mean, there was like three days all packed into one here. The whole sky was all stars, but there was like a little bit of a, kind of a crazy lightning show going on, which I've never seen before. I, I even took pictures of it. It's like a big picture of all stars Milky Way with lightning at the bottom. You know, this is the calm, this is the, you know, the easy part of the lake. But when you get up by, you know, old woman in Mission Cotton and, and areas like that, I mean, it, it definitely is colder and rougher and, uh, um, but it's, yeah, it's a wonderful lake because all the flavors are there, right? One second it be, can, can be totally calm and then the next it can be like violently wavy, which I think is always surprising to me how different her moods are. Every day it's different, yeah. Uh, in the winter time, I might be out there ice fishing one day, uh, the wind and waves pick up and literally the next day it's open water. When the, there's crushed ice and a huge storm, comes up and before you know it, you've got like two stories of icebergs landing on the beach and uh, beautiful as the sun hits it and all the the colors of blue go through the beautiful crystals it's gorgeous I'll never forget that I've never been scared of the water in my life but I am amazed at how violent it, it can be out there but to me that's just another mood that I really enjoy watching I wouldn't think you'd see 20-foot waves on Lake Superior because it's a lake. It's not an ocean. Power, the feel, the the wind, the sound of the... Like just, I don't know, I just love the storms. It's the only reason I want to be up here. One of the coolest things about Lake Superior is the sesh where it the water levels can change from like one side to the next and like one day you'll come out and the water level will be high and then you could come out like two hours later and the lake has fluctuated and then the water level is like two feet lower than it was earlier that same day is whether it's a raindrop coming from a lake or a stream uh, there's a retention time of how long that water will stay in Lake Superior and that time is about 191 years so uh, whether it flows out of the St. Mary's evaporates gets drinking or whatever uh, it's gonna be around for a, a little bit longer than we will the lake in itself I believe just rejuvenates you when you get out here and you listen to the waves you, you have the tranquility of the lake you see how vast it is the fact that you can spend you know, eight or nine hours driving around from here to Thunder Bay and you're still driving around the same lake. Uh, future generations have to be able to see the lake in this pristine setting, the wildlife along here. It's phenomenal. It does something really incredible for your mental health. Being in nature is very grounding for people and it can like bring a lot of balance to your life. I think that's something that's really important for people to be able to access and uh, get in yeah. touch with nature. From a, from a spiritual, religious point, I think there's an incredible tranquility that can be found um, on the shores, especially in a big body of water like this. I personally feel invigorated and restored. There's something magical that I really can't put a finger on, but um, I'm thankful. And I think one of the reasons why I think I've been living so long and quite healthy, I think that has a lot to do with the lifestyle that I had being love the outdoors. I've always been around a forest, around the lake. I just, you know, I, there's something that I just love. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I, I think they're all mental health related. Like I, I find it so calm up here. No matter what's going on, my there's no problem here. It's just peaceful and. <laughs> Look. Hey, like, this is where we 
get our drinking water from directly. Uh, my well is behind us and uh, that's something that we rely on, right? So it's kind of something that we always point out to people, you know, uh, we, it's important for us to take care of the lake because it kind of sustains us as well, right? It's prevailing winds come from the west and go blow towards the east. So that's why the eastern shore of Lake Superior gets so many, so much lake effect snow and precipitation. And that's why Lake Superior Provincial Park is a coastal boreal rainforest because we get all the winds from the west coming into the east, dumping all that precipitation over here. It means that a lot of like really hardy species can survive here. Like we get Arctic alpine plants and um, really hardy boreal um, forest species and all that. lots of biodiversity in a coastal boreal rainforest because it creates, it moderates the climate and, and creates niches of ecosystems that, that specific species can survive in and maybe not anywhere else. Looking at the water and looking at the land as a place that sustains your life. And I know it's kind of a broad thing, but that has to be more about what we think about when we think about environment. Maybe people who don't live on the lake might view uh, conservation efforts on the lake as something that seems insignificant. It might seem something like our efforts don't really make a difference when actually they do. Uh, every shoreline cleanup gets some garbage out of the lake, stops plastic from breaking down in the water, and it stops that plastic from getting into my drinking water. So I don't know if people necessarily make that connection right away if you're not kind of out there living in it all the time. I think it affects them whether they like it or not. Well, I think it's absolutely imperative that you set aside areas that uh, can't be developed, that are uh, regulated, uh, that have you know open access for everyone to enjoy because you want know, 200 years from now you still want people to be able to come to these beaches and, and feel the lake and experience uh, you know, the beauty. That generations to come will be able to experience like the same beauty that I love and appreciate so much and it's really important to me that uh, people will be able to access that in the future. It feels like it's part of me and the way it, the way it should be and now and later on in life I hope it's the same way. There's just an intrinsic value to Lake Spirit which I believe more people need to, to know about. The lake has absorbed a lot of a lot of impact, a lot of toxicity, and seems to have sur survived to this point. But to know that there's also, uh, I guess just through greed, just more pressure put upon mining, especially here on the North Shore of Lake Superior, and, the and close to the tributaries that are, that are flowing into Lake Superior, that there has to be a point in time where you realize there is no other place like this on the planet. Uh, the good news is, is people are still trying, people still keep going, and I, I, I think uh, conservation does matter to a lot of people. And then it gets to teach people who come onto the conservation. It keeps it pristine and people get to learn about what um, an untouched forest or untouched area looks like. Um, I think all around it should be um, maximized and encouraged and funded. I hope that they feel a deeper connection to water resources in general, but specifically Lake Superior creates such a huge diverse suite of habitats. and. I hope that people um, understand how significant and how important it is. Even if they don't get to see it every day, it is something that influences everyday life in Ontario and Ontario's ecosystems and the whole environment of Canada. And it's so important that we protect it. It's what you do in your everyday life. 
virtually has an impact on on whether this stays as healthy as it as we're experiencing it right now. We don't take fresh water for granted. And Lake Superior, which is at the top of the water chain for all of the great lakes, that more people in doing work like you're doing and doing this paddle and recording it to tell his story, that more people in the lower Great Lakes can find out where their water comes from. You, once you love a place so much, you'll, you'll, do any, you'll do anything to defend that place. This outdoor type of life is a very healthy part of your life, I think. I think people should do more of that. Enjoy the simple things of life, it's the healthiest things of life, I think. When you first pull up and you start making your camp, you realize that the lake gives you back something. Come out and experience Lake Superior. It's it's an awesome place. You know, do it uh, do it as much as you can. Do it safely. This is a community that's attached to this lake, and we all have that common, beautiful spirit of fresh water at our doorstep. Join me in giving back to Lake Superior. Support conservation. Go for a swim. Go for a paddle. Watch the waves. Share the spirit of fresh water. <laughs>